Tell me about how you met Blaze Foley and uh, some of those early adventures you had with Blaze. <laughs> well, I met. I was playing the Bitter End in New York, and uh, Blaze came down. And it was kind of the last night, I think, of that gig. It was like a four-day, three-day type deal, and uh, I finished playing. And uh, up walks this strange-looking guy. And he introduced himself and said he was uh, Blaze Foley and, uh, from uh, Texas. And he'd heard about me, and uh, he's from Austin. And I hadn't been to Austin too much for a while because I was living in Nashville and been on the road. We became immediate uh, friends. And uh, there's two Texans, two West Texans in New York. And I'd been there kind of before, and he never had. Uh, but he had a room at the Gramercy Park Hotel, which is a hotel a lot of us stay at. And somebody, some well-meaning record guy, had given Blaze the uh, power to sign his own tab, his, I mean, carte blanche room tab, anything you could sign for in the hotel. And so I moved in with Blaze. I moved out of my hotel and moved in with Blaze, and he was supposed to stay there for however many days to do something, meet somebody. And we... Uh, bankrupted the record company. We, would, we were just drove room service into the ground. We'd order like, uh, you know, 30 tequila sunrises, you know, one uh, hamburger cut in half and tip the guy, old black man, 60 or 70 bucks. And when this went on day and night for uh, three days until the record company heard about it and arranged for us to fly to Nashville. It was cheaper to fly us to Nashville, where I lived, than it was to, you know, put up with Blaze. It was wild times. So there was a bunch, every day with old Blaze was kind of a, some sort of an adventure. Uh, he cut an album in Muscle Shoals. You went to Muscle Shoals for those sessions, yeah. didn't you? That was a real adventure. I have a, you know, a song, Blaze's Blues, which that's kind of, that little trip was kind of mentioned. And, uh, that, that kind of almost the same thing happened. I just had a new uh, son born, my wife and I, and uh, I'd planned it to be home until Will was, you know, a month old or so and go back and play gigs. I get this call from Blaze, and he's in Alabama, and he uh, he's in Atlanta at that point, and he's going to do a record in Muscle Shoals with this bunch of guys, and he wants me to be there. I told him, Blaze, I already, I can't, I just can't. I mean, we had a baby uh, a day and a half ago, so. And he was like, oh, man, you got to, you know, just wouldn't be the same if you weren't here, too. I, Blaze, I, you know, I can't, this is the best pickers in the world. There's nothing I can add. I mean, I can't hardly sing harmony, you know, this, that, and the other. And he said, well, you probably sing some harmony, and, uh, you know, you just be around. I'd have a buddy to hang around with, this, that, and the other. And he kept calling and calling. I kept saying no. And finally, it just got to work. Just to keep him from calling, it's like, okay. But you have to get your friend, your record company, to buy the tickets. And I'll fly to Atlanta. And, you know, we can ride in your uh, record company's private airplane, which was part of the argument why I should go. They, they had their own airplane, and I was going to be treated like royalty and this and that and the other. So which didn't make much difference to me. But finally, just because Blaze was calling me day and night, I just decided, well, I'll go for a couple of days, a few days. So we got there. I got to Atlanta, met his uh, young, uh, these young guys are our age, you know, who owned this record company and had a private plane and had uh, a bunch of gold chains on. I noticed that right off. And uh, got in their private plane and flew to Muscle Shoals and landed, and somebody picked us up and drove us to a hotel, motel, and uh, the head guy from the record company told Blaze and I that we were to wait at the hotel. They checked us in. We were to wait at the hotel for uh, two days. First of all, it started uh, until the next day because they were going to go check on trading this airplane for another airplane. So we go into the hotel. I found out as soon as we got to the hotel room that they had given Blaze uh, $300 cash. So there we are. Don't know anybody in northern Alabama. $300. And it didn't take us any time at all to figure out the logistics were. You called a cab. 
and uh, you took a uh, about six minute cab ride across the Tennessee River where you bought a pint of vodka and then a six minute cab ride back. The cab ride was five dollars. So we figured that out right away. And we sat there and we watched a football game and, you know, just uh, very serene and cool waiting for him the next day, the next morning. The next morning came and uh, no record company because it's to be 10 or 11 noon. So we take another cab ride. We get a fifth of vodka, come back to the room. And uh, that night, still no record company, no word. And it got started dawning on me like, please. Yeah, and you know, I think I know what kind of guys you're mixed up with. And I mean, they're not thinking about you sitting here in this uh, hotel room. You know, I mean, it may be a week before they get back. And so Blaze kind of kicked into gear. Maybe you shouldn't even have said that, but Blaze kind of kicked into gear. And it ended up after about four days. Blaze is telling me, he's like over peeking through the curtains. He's claiming to see Iranians with uh, Uzi submachine guns around the pool and stuff like that. And I was trying to keep him under control. And uh, finally I decided I can't stand anymore. And I was like no angel this whole time. And we've been in this one little room. It got to where Blaze wouldn't leave the room. <laughs> it was terrible. And uh, I got on the phone and I decided, well, I'm going to get Guy Clark to uh, send me enough money and I'll take a bus to Nashville. And once I'm in Nashville, I can somehow get a plane ticket back to Texas and I'll be home and Blaze can do his record. But things by then were like much, uh, you know, beyond what I was, you know, best laid plans of mice and men. But anyway, I got on the phone to call a uh, guy and... Uh, I don't know what Blaze, who Blaze thought I was phoning, but uh, he jumped over the bed and uh, ripped the phone out of the wall. At which point, the uh, <laughs> and the whole room was pretty much, his half of the room at least was trashed. And uh, when the phone was ripped out of the wall, the uh, motel operator became real interested and uh, came up to see if everything was all right. I don't know what Blaze said to him at the door of the room, but uh, he retreated and called the, the uh, Florence, Alabama police who arrived. And uh, I was put into the uh, unenviable pos position of being the peacemaker, which was all I managed to do was keep Blaze from being beaten to death and maybe even shot, you know by these Alabama police who just, Blaze was in a rage, which he really could go into sometimes. I've seen Blaze at his most gentle and his most outrageous, and uh, the Alabama cops were not amused and being called Nazi pigs and such by this screaming giant hippie. And uh, one of them was, uh, at one point, one of them was reaching for a club, and the other one was reaching for his gun. So I jumped in the middle of talked as fast as I could about uh, Blaze was really okay. He was just drunk, and we've been here four days. Blah, 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 blah. So they just uh, handcuffed Blaze, threw him in the back, and then kind of looked around at me, and I thought for an instant, you know, just a brief flashing minute that uh, they were going to let me go. And I couldn't, I mean, what was I going to do? I didn't have any money. They certainly weren't going to let me back in the motel. The, you know, and uh, anyway, one of them said, take that SOB too, <laughs> handcuffed, <laughs> and woke up in the Florence, Alabama jail, which is one of the worst places I've ever been. 30 or 40 minutes later, the people that had picked us up at the airport came and picked me up and drove around the courthouse a couple more times, and there, there was Blaze. So we're, we're a happy little crew. It was back. The owners of the record company were still gone on whatever errand it was. And uh, I got word that the... Uh, the uh, owners were mad, I mean, blazingly angry at me for throwing a wrench into their record operation. And this is after I'd been drug away from my day-and-a-half-year-old kid, told I was going to be treated like royalty, and all of this had happened. And I just said, man, 
that's enough for me. I, you know, they were saying, boy, you, boy, you're lucky. What's the name and what's the name aren't here, man. And, uh, I said, well, you just give me 10 bucks. Give me enough money for a, a, a bus ticket to Nashville and buy me a half pint of vodka and a Coke and drop me off at the bus station. And I, you won't ever have to worry about me again. I don't want to talk to anybody about anything anymore. And uh, which they did, you know, and Blaze felt terrible about it. And uh, the next bus to Nashville was about four hours, five hours. And they, dro- they drove back up a couple of times uh, because Blaze had explained the whole situation and told him that I had saved his life and it wasn't my fault. And da, 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 my poor baby was at home. And, da, 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 da. and finally, I found out the owners also got the information and I got, uh, they apologized, you know, and by this time I was back in Texas. I was, uh, I can't remember. Uh, being as mad at a big at a group of people as right, and they were can they were they would come back by and say that the owners had decided that it'd be perfectly all right if I stayed around. It's just like the bus is in two more hours. Oh, and you want to just hang around with us? You don't want to sit here in the bus station? I'll just sit here. Thank you very much. And then, like you, I didn't know that record ever came out, but uh, you told me it did. And uh, shortly after that, the owners were indicted for. I think conspiracy to, uh, you know, sell drugs or something. I heard the FBI ended up with the masters to that album. And the FBI got one of Blaze's records. I hope they listened to it. <laughs>